welcome to Chair Interval Training brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and the Yellow Springs Senior Center and me, Lynn Hardman. I am wearing my Simply Women purple t-shirt uh, because when this show airs it will be March and March is National Women's History Month and I just wanted to give a shout out to this this fine organization developed by a fine young woman, Paloma Wiggins, here locally, that raises money for the education of young women and girls and funds a scholarship. And most years, but maybe not this year, uh, they hold a Simply Women 5K walk run. That's just simply wonderful. All right, so shout out to all you local women in charge. We've got very many here. We're fortunate here in Yellow Springs to have so many great quality mentors in our local women leaders. All right, now we are not here to just talk about women. We are here to exercise. So please have a sturdy chair. If you have a rubber ball and our sock weights or any hand weights, that would be useful. If you don't have any of that, just a chair and you is all you'll need. But before we begin this program, make sure you consult your doctor before you do any new activities or if something's changed for your physical health. Uh, another key to your success with this is if you feel dizzy or out of balance at any time, please remain or return to your chair. Well, let's get started. All right, I got some music, Latin this, this week, hope you like it. If not, tune in next week, it'll be something different. <laughs> We're going to start standing up, but you're more than welcome to remain in your chair and just keep moving at your own pace. <laughs> All right, always stay close enough to your chair so that you can use it as your balance check. Another thing that will help you is to keep your shoulders sort of stacked right underneath your ears or your ears right over your shoulders, shoulders over your hips and knees over ankles, whether you're seated or standing. This is our best posture and that makes our movements easier. One of the goals of this exercise program is to make our movements easier. Now, another real important goal of this, this is a silver sneakers class, is to reduce our risk of falls. So, be mindful, watch first when you're, something new is coming, and then, as soon as you feel safe and confident, start small, and then you can increase your range of motion or go back to the last thing that you felt safe and confident with. Well, we're just warming up, so get those arms and legs a-pumping, whether you're seated or standing. Take a couple of nice deep breaths, inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth, or breathe however it's comfortable for you. See how far the shoulders want to go? And please use your full, safe, comfortable range of motion. If part of it doesn't feel good, don't do that. All right. Let's see if we can get in behind our chair here, widen out our stance, and perform a little triple flexion, little mini squat. <laughs> My tongue was tied there. Now, if everything's feeling fine and you want, come up to the balls of your toes or your feet. Stretch one arm, then the other. Everything feeling fine and your balance permits, try both arms. Warming up the hips, thighs, calves, and feet. One more time. Woo. March it out. Maybe just rock your body side to side. Warm up those shoulders with a little shoulder roll. A little at first, and maybe a little bigger. Awesome. Let's see how it feels to open and close the shoulders and chest a bit. Good. Now I want to preview a couple of patterns that we're going to use today. 
while we're getting our heart and lungs and legs stronger, we're always going to work on the ABCs. Agility, balance, and coordination. If you come over to one side of your chair, the left side here, I'm going to show you a balance pattern that's similar to ones we've done before, but I'm going to call it a repeater balance. We're going to do single knee lifts, and we'll do it for eight counts. Then we'll do it, but when we get back to one, we're going to do a repeater. So we'll do one and two on the same side, and then we'll keep alternating. Then we'll do a repeater on one, two, and three. Okay? That's what it sounds like. Here's what it looks like if you just lift your knees up. And if we're going to count together. Are you counting with me? From one to eight. Ready? Begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now two on the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now three on this side. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now four on this side. Three. We gotta count up. You get the picture. Don't worry. We'll get there together one step at a time. But that's what's coming for our balance pattern. And we're gonna use a cha-cha for our agility pattern. You'll need to be behind your chair so you can use it as your balance check. So stay right there, but I'm going to come out in front, so just so you can see what I'm doing with my feet. We're going to step out really slow to the right into a squat. Step out, and then march to three. To your left now. March to three. As you step out, keep your weight even in both feet. Try to keep your body centered. And you don't have to go down very far, but put your weight into both feet. Good. One more time, slow. Now we're going to do it a little bit faster. Step out, one, two, three, step out. And this is where our feet get to move a little faster. We're shifting our weight. So we're working on agility. And then later on, if you feel like it's within your safe, comfortable uh, abilities, we're going to go even faster. Just step out both ways, out. Out. So we're putting our weight in both feet. And now we took our cha-cha to a salsa. You can add some arms or not. You can just march it out. We're going to continue to warm up, but we're going to come to our chair and do a little dynamic stretching. Now that we got the blood flowing and the joints a little warm, we're going to get our heels right smack down on that chair. Feel the chair so as you get your hips back, keeping your head up and squat, you can do it a couple times. Or just get seated. If you lost your balance, your knee or your hip gave out, boom, you're right there safely in your chair. Speaking of when we're in our chair, that's the best time to get a sip of water. Hopefully you got some fresh water on hand. The things that we might take for granted, right? Uh, hopefully, by the time you see this, Texas will be out of trouble, but wow, just having a little clean, potable water can be a, something that many of us take for granted. So here's to good, clean drinking water. Alrighty, sit near the edge of your seat because this makes it easier for us to move through all of our joints. And it also makes us active. Keep your core engaged, brace, but breathe. Sitting tall, think about the crown of your head stretching up to the sky. Good. Tuck your shoulder blades in your back pockets. Hands on your waist, buckle up your safety belt. That's meaning bracing with your abdominal muscles and stretch out your right leg and then your left. If it feels good and your abs are tight, Supporting your lower back, you could stretch the sole of your foot into the air. If it doesn't feel good on your lower back or your hip, just stretch that leg out, tap the heel out. We're getting an active hamstring stretch. Now, if you would stretch with that opposite arm, 
You don't have to touch the toes, just stretch toward them. And stretch the toes toward your knee nose. Whew, having trouble with my tongue today. All right, we're moving slow enough. We can just encourage some flexibility in our ankle with a flex point flex. Flex point flex. I don't know about you, but I have to remind my spine to sit tall. Sometimes as I start to move other parts, I start to slump. One more on each side. Good, now let's stretch out that right leg. Get a stretch, inhale up, keep the spine long and strong, and reach forward. Spread your fingers wide, and maybe circle your ankle and your wrist one direction, and then the other. Ooh, good. Sit tall, pull that knee towards your chest. And if you like, you can circle your ankle again. One direction and then the other. Good, sitting tall. Let's get that left hamstring stretch. Supporting on the right lap. If the shoulder hurts when you extend, please bring it in shorter. But keep the back nice and long. If you lift your toes and fingers, It'll develop that stretch on the back of the thigh a bit more. And then you can circle one way, wrist end, ankle, and then the other. Good, sit tall, hold the navel in as if you're zipping up tight pants, but keep breathing. And you can circle that ankle some more if you like. And the other way. Okay. I want to show you a couple other movements that we're going to use later on. We're going to use a little bit of a rotation and reach with our right hand into our left hip pocket and unsheathe a sword. Try that again. Nice and slow, keeping that length in our torso. Let's try it on the other side. So left hand reaching into the right hip pocket and unsheath your sword. Excellent. So that's a movement that we'll do with our hand weights today. But let's take a nice deep inhale, open our chest. Exhale, close, interlace those fingers and curl the spine gently. Hands overhead, stretch through one side. Now we should feel a little bit more ready to move our body by now. If we're using our scale of perceived exertion, one being the lowest possible intensity and 10 being maximal, actually too much intensity, hopefully when we've accomplished this warm up, you feel like a two or a three. And remember, we're shooting for a, a happy medium intensity of a four to possibly an eight whenever we do our aerobic or cardiovascular patterns. So I'm trusting you there at home to go at your own pace. Ready, whether you're seated or standing, we're gonna work on that agility pattern first. Let's do that cha-cha-cha, shall we? You can do it squatting out with your left and then marching, squatting out with your right. You can do it in your chair. But those of you who know that you're ready and able and most comfortable on your feet, you go ahead and get up to your feet and I'll join you in a minute or less. Good, remember, weight equal in both feet, body weight centered. Excellent. Do it again. I'm going to get on my feet and to your right. Wait a minute. We got a new beat. Let me see if I can find it with you. Okay, I'm ready. How about you? To your right. Out and one, two, three. Out and let's do one more time each direction at this slow tempo. Then we'll just take it up a little faster. Out and one, two, three. 
Now, if you want, you can sink into your little mini squat a little lower. And on that one, two, three, that quick step, you can come up to the balls of your feet. Or not. Make it yours. Make it the way that feels best to you. And if you want, you've got your chair there to check your balance. We could add an element of coordination here. We could just push the same direction as our foot is going with that same side arm. Good, how are you doing? Remember, you can slow it down or speed it up, whatever you like. All right, we're pushing the same side with that same side arm and leg. Let's try the opposite arm, pointing away from where the leg is going. Did you get that? I hope so. We're gonna do one more little change up here, but let's keep pushing with that opposite arm away from the leg. Remember that move I showed you where you were unsheathing the sword? Pretend you're reaching across and out. Touche <laughs> or on guard. Kind of more on diagonal now. How are you doing? Excellent. How about one more each direction? And then just the legs, just the legs. Now, think about this. If we got rid of that one, two, three in the middle, we could go double time and just step out. Not yet. Get ready, get set. Ready? Fast feet, step, step. Now, you're really putting your weight into it. You're not just tapping. It's almost like you feel like you're downhill skiing. If you've ever done that or a little cross country, you can push with your arms. Awesome. Getting that heart rate up. How are you feeling? Can you talk? Four, three, two, just march it out. Let's take a little bit of an assessment balance break here. Take a deep breath. Are you close to that four to seven, maybe eight? While we're waiting to catch our breath, if we are, walk that right foot out, bring your body to a diagonal. Pull your knee up toward your elbow. See if you can do that without grabbing your chair, knowing you've got your chair if you need it, and knowing you can always step out. That's an anti-falling strategy. All right, let's do our cha-cha again. This time, why don't we bring it over to the left side and we'll take our cha-cha pattern forward, okay? So left foot forward and one, two, three. Right foot forward, make sure you can touch your chair. Always, always you should be able to see it with your peripheral vision and touch it with your hand. One more slow on the left. One more slow on the right. All right, a little bit faster. Forward and cha-cha-cha, down and up, up, up. Now, you've got your chair there if you need it for a balance check. Well, let's add same side arm pointing the same direction as that leg. Forward, forward, if you need to keep that right arm on the chair, do it. Otherwise, you can add that. Hopefully you're getting that footwork. Every time we do a pattern and we add footwork and changes in rhythm and limb length, uh, coordination, we're doing brain stimulation as well. Okay, same side arm as leg. Let's do opposite. 
Right arm with the left leg, left arm with the right. I bet most of you made that switch over just fine. And if not, it's okay. Keep working at it. All right, four more at this tempo. And then we're gonna just do the legs. All right, just legs. Forward and one, two, three. Forward and one, two, three. We could, if you want, take this double time. Ready, set, go. Step, step, step. Sink down into it as much as is comfortable for your knees and hips. Chest high. You got this. Four more. Three, two, one. March it out. All right. Shoot. Hey, how are you doing on our one to ten intensity scale? Feeling fine? Well, we really need to catch our breath and balance on that other side before we try our cha-cha pattern another time. So behind your chair, stretch that left leg out, pull the navel in, long, strong diagonal, float that foot as you draw knee toward elbow. See if you can float your hand, your right hand, just over that chair, knowing you can grab it if you need it. And what's our other anti-fall strategy? Stopping out. Okay, one of base, four by bar, on the right side here. Make sure you got a good clear, safe, nothing under your feet pattern. This time we're gonna do a little step back with our cha-cha. So right leg back, one, two, three, left leg back. Got it, slow, one, two, three, Slow. A little bit faster if you like. Back and one, two, three. One, two, three. Now you can see and touch your chair. You're kind of near the back leg corner of that four legged chair. I hope you're using a four legged chair. I suppose a sturdy three-legged stool with a back would work as well, but the more points we can have on the floor, the more stability and balance we have. Now we're going straight back with that foot. If you want, you can take it ever so slightly behind you. As if you're saying, after you, whoa, after you. Same side arm is opening back with that leg. Get the hang of this. Remember, you don't have to angle it. You can also just take it straight back. You can make it bigger or littler. You can always keep your left hand on that chair and keep the head and the chest high. How are you doing? We're using same side arm as the leg. We're going to stick with that. Maybe four more at this tempo. Three, two, then we're going to try it twice as fast. Back, back, back. Maybe you don't want to put the arms in. That's fine. Or keep them, keep them small, but keep the core tight. You're doing the Cuban salsa. <laughs> Four more. Three, two, one. Just march it out. How are you doing? Ah, deep breath. Should we slow our breathing and intensity down a little bit with one more balance? Uh, check on the right and then on the left. Behind your chair, right leg stretching out. Arm and leg in a nice strong diagonal. This time, see if you can lift that hip with a long straight leg. Using your balance, knowing you've got your chair. 
Knowing you can step out whenever you need. Left side, stretch out the left leg. Left arm up in that long, strong diagonal, floating that left leg. See how you could do with that. Holding the body in that diagonal, stable posture. Woo! All right, well, I'm ready to transition to the chair. How about you? We worked a lot on our heart and lungs. We're going to take some time now to work on our skeletal muscle strength because that's very important. Get those heels right smack down on the chair and hand your hips back while you keep your head and chest up. This body weight squat is a great exercise. It might not be in everybody's wheelhouse due to hip or knee pain or ankle immobility. You do need a lot of all three of those joints have to be mobile to be able to squat properly. All right, we're seated. Good time to get a drink of water. So be mindful. Step to the side, brace, breathe as you get your water. We're gonna work with our ball today. Hopefully you have a ball. If you don't, these exercises will work. Um, the first one I'm going to show you, though, if you didn't have a ball, you could put your knees together or just put a little sofa cushion or a small pillow between your knees so you don't have the bony parts, uh, you know, uncomfortably together. But we're going to do some inner thigh squeezes. So sit near the edge of your chair. If you've got your ball or your pillow, place it between your legs above the knee joint. Feet should be a tiny bit closer than the knees so that you can use this small range of motion while you exhale to strengthen your inner thighs and squeeze. It's best to exhale as you imagine squeezing the air out of your ball or your pillow. Now, hold the navel in and as you exhale, you can feel this immediately strengthening the inner thighs. We're gonna add on, if you please, by digging our heels down each time we squeeze. So push heels into the ground and feel those hamstrings, backs of the thighs, start to strengthen as well. Also, pick the toes up to strengthen the, cat, the shin muscles. Breathe each time. Now we have a lot of endurance in our lower body and less so in the smaller muscles of the upper body, but you have a choice now of adding an upper body exercise if nothing hurts. If you have any sharp, sudden shooting pain with what I'm about to show you, chair dips or modified dips, you're not gonna do it. Simple. But take the heels of your hand and dig them into the seat. Find a comfy spot, take your time, and each time you squeeze your knees together and drive your heels down and toes up, push your arms towards a straighter position. Push the shoulders down away from your earlobes and feel the backs of your upper arms strengthening. You're also working the chest, the muscles that depress or push the shoulders down. If you want, you can swing your hips up and try a glute bridge with that. Squeeze, breathe, and we've done a lot. So if you're getting tired, good. That's the goal of our strength training is to feel like, oh, I'm done. All right, we're gonna work on our abdominals now. Again, reposition your hips comfortably near the edge of your seat. We'll have the option of doing some grip strengthening here, but that's an option. So let's get our core engaged. It says someone's gonna bop you in the belly, but breathe. Good, now tuck your tailbone under, shoulders down, lean back. As far as you comfortably can without your feet popping up off the ground. That's not good for your lower back. So once you go as far as you can, 
while maintaining that good brace. That is, you should feel like your belly button's pulling in towards your spine, not bulging out. You should feel like that. And breathe. So slides. Then, if you want, you can add a squeeze on that ball because grip strength is very important for activities of daily living. Now you keep squeezing. Keep working those abs. I'm going to show you what I'm doing with my hands, but you keep sliding. You can just use the four fingers against the heel of the hand and then relax your grip if your thumbs are arthritic. Or you can add your thumbs to the mix while you're doing your ab slides. You're probably getting pretty tired by now. But just in case you got more in the tank, you could add a lift and an opposite or an alternating knee tap. Now, I'm probably not feeling as fatigued as you are because I got up and demonstrated, so <laughs> take a break. Ooh, you should feel it there and maybe in your hands as well. Good for you. All right, now, another exercise. And this one, you can do standing or seated. I'm going to show you seated. A little bit wide stance, tuck the ball under your elbow and give it a squeeze. This is strengthening the shoulder stabilizers. They keep your shoulder from popping out of joint. We're also going to strengthen the obliques by adding a tilt. This is what it looks like seated. And if you want, this is what it looks like standing. I'm going to come down into a little sumo squat. And if you wanted to add a little bit more intensity, you can lift that opposite elbow. We're keeping the hips tucked under and we're staying in a slightly flexed squat position. Breathe each time to squeeze the air out of the ball. Excellent. You can do the other side, seated or standing. Show it seated first, and then I'll transition. So pull the navel in, squeeze, feel free to readjust that ball as needed, and then add your side lateral flexion. This is working not just the obliques, which are the abdominal muscles that sort of wrap around our torso, help us to breathe and they help us to laterally flex and to rotate. But it's also strengthening the spinal stabilizers. Remember, you can add resistance here or you could be standing, slight squat. Just be careful not to lean forward or hinge forward. That's another exercise we'll do later. Give it your best. Nothing should hurt sharp, sudden, or shooting, but you should definitely feel like oh, a little dull achiness wanting to stop. And good news, we are done with that set of strength work, so you can tuck your ball away or just place it off to the side. Mine tends to pop out. And let's get our another sip of water. How are you doing? Good? I hope so. Oh, it's been a stretch of cold weather. I tell you, February has the fewest days in the, as far as the months go, but it seems to take the longest. <laughs> Again, by the time you see this, it'll be March. I love to turn that calendar page. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do our balance pattern again. And I didn't do this, the best job uh, demonstrating that to you practice and it's a newish pattern so just to prepare us all for success I'm going to show it in the chair and explain it. Anyway I would call it a repeater. We're going to alternate leg lifts, something with our, our knee lifts or hamstrings or hips and then we're going to count up to eight 
And then after we complete that first set with the legs alternating, then we're going to do a repeater. So let's try a repeater on one and two, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now repeat on one, two, three. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now repeat on one, two, three, four. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You got it? Then we'll repeat on five. And then we'll repeat on six. And then we'll repeat on seven until we're doing all eight counts on one leg. And then we'll, we'll try something different. <laughs> but this is to get our heart rate elevated. Work on some patterns to engage our brain. Work on our balance while we strengthen our heart and lungs a bit. So if you want, come on over to your, if you're standing, you'll be on the right side of your chair. Shoulders down, doesn't matter which side you start with. It'll alternate, kind of, or it'll seem arbitrary, but trust me, we'll get the same amount in on both sides eventually. I'm gonna start with my right knee. Remember, we're gonna do a set of eight alternating, and then we'll start our repeaters on one and two. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, repeat on one and two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat on one, two, and three. Two, three. Now alternate. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Here we go. Repeat four. Three, four, five, six, seven. Repeat five times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat six times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat seven. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now eight times. Seven, or counting up. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I felt that in my thighs. How about you? Well, let's even it out. Come over here. Now, we'll, we'll get that later. Let's get behind our chair and do our hamstring curl so we can lengthen the fronts of these thighs before we get that to the side. So nice wide stance. We're gonna do hamstring curls. I'm gonna start with the left. Doesn't matter which side you start with, but remember, we're gonna alternate for eight, and then we'll start our repeaters counting up, which is the hard part for me. I'm used to counting down. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat two. Now, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat one, two, three, four. Now, alternate. Six, seven, eight. Repeat. Five, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat. Six, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat. Seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat all eight on that side. Are you with me? Five, six, seven, eight. Hopefully you're getting this pattern. How are you doing with your um, more numbers? Our, our intensity scale of one to 10. Doing okay? Need to take a break? If so, go ahead. Rest for a few seconds and then come back in, either seated or on your feet. Come on over to your left side of your chair if you're standing. Make sure you've got that right hand on the chair. This time we're going to start with the left knee. If you can remember with our alternating knee lifts. Or if you want, you can just kick it out like you're skipping rope. Let's try that. So we'll just pretend we're skipping rope. You ready? Left foot, here we go. Eight, alternating. Three, four, five, six, seven, 
Repeat. One and two. Now alternate. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat. One, two, and three. Alternate. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat. First four. Three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. Repeat the first five. Two, three, four, five. Alternate. Six, seven, eight. Repeat the first six. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, repeat seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat all eight. Seven, or two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow, how are you doing? That's more about balance. I didn't get real breathy with that one, but a little bit. So hopefully you're feeling a little something for your heart and lungs. This one will get your muscles and your hips going as well as your heart and lungs. If you add a little dip in it, we're gonna use long leg hip abduction. We're gonna start with our right leg in this nice wide-ish stance. And we're just gonna just dip down into our mini squat to get prepared. So we'll start with our right leg. You can start with your left, it doesn't really matter. And we'll do alternating. And then we'll do our repeaters, going all the way up from one to eight. Let's go, ready, right leg. One, two, three, four. You can make it big as you like. Six, seven, repeat one and two. One, two, alternate. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat one, two, and three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat one through four. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Repeat five times now. Five, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat six, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat seven, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. Can we go eight, eight? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Woo! I felt that. How about you? You need to stretch it out. Please do so. Woo! That was good. Counting up. I have to check our time. I should have put my clock out. Shucks. But remember, your perceived exertion or how you feel is spot on. Sometimes we can have what's called a normal or average heart rate, but something's going on and we don't feel well. Trust your body. Conversely, we could have an abnormal heart rate, or, or it seems to be, but we feel fine. Again, trust your body. But if you have a consistently abnormal heart rate, you might want to talk to your uh, healthcare providers about that. And keeping track of those little health measures is a really good way to be able to talk and sometimes through telehealth with your doctor or your nurse practitioners to help you assess your health and make the best steps from it. All right, have you caught your breath? Have you caught your squats? Get those feet on your chair and get those hips back. You can add a little intensity by going down, actually trying to tap your hips and then pushing those hips forward and digging your heels in and squeezing your glutes. Down slow and up with a little oomph for power, if that suits you. If not, go ahead and get seated. Take your time and step to the side, lean to the side to get a sip of water. Let me see where we're at with our music here. We're gonna finish off our strength set using our weights. I've got the sock weights that we've created, if you've been following along. But you could do these exercises with no weights and very 
just a mindful attention to tensing or strengthening the muscles that are the target muscles, and that would still work. What I like about these sock weights is that they're soft, so if you drop them on your toe, it doesn't hurt. Not so with a like a, a, a canned good or a, a hand weight that's made of metal or, or hard plastic. So we're going to get started with those unsheathing. So sit near the front edge of your chair. I'm going to show it seated. And then I'm going to show it standing. It actually we don't need one of our weights. Let's put it in our right arm. The other thing that's nice about these sock weights is I've got about three pounds in here. If you've got a long enough sock, you can just do like that. If you've got some grip strength problems, okay. All right. You can also hold it. That's fine. Sitting at the front edge of your chair, pull the navel in. Reach with that right hand into the left hip pocket and then unsheathe your imaginary sword. So this is the seated version. Rotating, keeping the length in our spine as we rotate those ribs around and actually tracking the hand weight with our eyes will help. So keep working on that if you're seated. I'm going to show an, uh, a standing version that will give a side lunge as well. Behind our chair, nice wide, wide stance. Toes pointing the same direction straight ahead. We're going to pull, flex into that left hip as we reach into that left hip pocket and we're going to straighten. The right leg stays straight the whole time. So this is our standing unsheath the sword movement, which by the way is working our rear shoulder when we're crossing the body and our medial deltoid or shoulder muscles as we push up. So again, this is a side lunge. Left leg is hinging, hip back. Knee is not jutting ahead of the toe, if you look at that. And you're probably out of steam. So let's switch. If you're seated, go ahead and put that weight in the left hand. Pull the length up through your spine. And you're just going to rotate those ribs around and then push up. So reach into that right hip pocket and extend on a diagonal to the upper left. Now, if you're standing, you can just be standing and that adds an, uh, some calories and balance to the exercise. However, if you want to add leg strength, put a flex into that right hip, getting the hip back as the knee comes forward, but not ahead of the toes. This one's tricky because our body's turning, so it really challenges balance and leg strength. So if you've got your chair there, if you're uncomfortable with this in any way, keep your hand on the chair or just go back to the arm movement, not the legs. Breathe. How about one more? That was hard, wasn't it? Okay, we're gonna do another exercise. You can be seated or standing. I'm gonna show seated first. This one, we're gonna use both weights if you care to because we have more strength in the rear part of the shoulder to do a one-armed row. We'll start with the right arm, scooching to the right side of the chair, taking a split stance or a slight lunge stance. So lengthening our spine, hinging forward at the hip but supporting, stretching the arm out to reach for the right or the left toes, and then pulling that elbow back, squeezing shoulder blades together. This time we're not adding rotation, we're keeping our shoulders and hips square, both of those 
facing straight ahead. So this is the seated version. This is very challenging if you want an element of balance. You're gonna lift your knee up, hinge forward, support on that lap. That's the seated version. You can also do it standing. Best posture, left hand touching the chair, weight in your left foot, hinging forward as that right leg goes back, long, strong spine, and then pinch those shoulder blades together as you do your one-arm row. So slow and controlled, hinging forward, balancing on that left leg, using the left hamstrings quite a lot. While we strengthen our upper back and our rear deltoids. Okay, I'm feeling that. Wanting to move to the other side, how about you? Again, you can be standing. I'm going to show it seated. Those of you who know you want to be standing, go ahead and get situated. Here we are, scooched over to the left side of the chair, both weights in the left arm. Getting that right left leg back in our split stance, supporting a long, strong spine, hinging forward as we reach, straightening the arm for the right toes and squeeze the shoulder blades together at the top. Breathe, however is natural for you. Really tricky in the chair. It uses your core to move that knee down when the weights go down and up. So that's the seated version. I'm going to again demonstrate the standing version. This is a one arm row with a one leg deadlift or a Romanian deadlift. So make sure you can touch the chair with that right hand, weight in your right foot, long strong spine as you hinge forward, and then row, squeezing those shoulder blades together. This is a, this particular exercise uses a lot of balance and our foot on that balance leg is really working hard strengthening our foot and ankle as well as our hamstrings the back of the upper thigh all right i am going to do one more how did that feel you probably felt it in this hamstring area so if you want before we get seated, we could give that a little stretch. Put all your weight in one leg, tap the other heel on the ground in front of you, and keep the back long, hold on to your chair. You could do this seated as well, but keep the chin up above the level of the heart. Lift the toes up and feel that good lengthening. Lift your tailbone, feel it near the top of that muscle where you probably felt it with your one, one leg at tennis. So now switch over, weights in the other hip, toes up. We are not putting our weight on that foot so much, it's just, just settling it on the ground, keeping the length in our torso as we hinge forward, keeping our head above the level of our heart. Oh, good. We have done it, we have completed almost um, 50 plus minutes of good solid aerobic activity and some strength work. We're gonna finish off with a little bit of balance and a little bit of stretching and a little bit of relaxation. So if you need to sit, sit down for this part, that's fine. If you can stand, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to challenge our balance with a very careful tightrope walk or balance beam walk. To set ourselves up, I want to be able to touch the chair facing that right side of the room. And we're just gonna do a little toe heel walk, able to touch this chair. Maybe I'll only be able to go three steps before I can no longer touch that chair. 
At that point, I'm going to do a little leg swing, knowing I can put my foot down or grab my chair. And I'll go back probably just three steps so that I could do that leg swing, keeping body straight and tall on the other leg. So the only joint moving here is the hip joint. Now let's take it forward and back again, if you want. Pull the navel in, gently pull the crown of the head up, and then back. I've got my finger so I can just touch that whenever I need that chair. I can also step out off of that balance beam and into my safety net. Whew, all right, before we sit down, the best way to stretch your calves is standing, if you can. If not, you could be seated. I'm gonna use a little bit of the wall here so I can really dig in and get a nice, thorough, but gentle calf stretch. And you can do the same, walking your leg back, toes pointing as straight as you can toward that wall that you're leaning into. The knee is straight, the heels pasted on the ground. If you like, you can relax out of that after 30 to 60 seconds or so. Just bring it in an inch or two closer to the wall and shift your weight, sort of allowing that knee to bend, kind of sitting into your hind quarter. And you may or may not feel the shift in this stretch to a little lower on the heel or towards the outside of the front of the shin. Ease out of that. Whether you feel that, it's still benefiting most of the muscles between the knee and the heel. So let's try the other side. Take your time. Walking that other foot back, heels pasted to the ground. Toes should be pointing straight towards that wall or door that whatever you're using, that sturdy vertical surface. And give it time. Be gentle. And ease out of that straight leg calf stretch when you're ready. Maybe bring that foot in a couple inches. And allowing that knee to bend, kind of shifting weight into that rear hip. Wow, those are good stretches. If the rest of our body were as strong as these little powerhouses of calves, <laughs> we would be, well, we are strong. All right, get seated however you like. You don't have to squat a lot. Just sit down safely, have another sip of water. And we're gonna do a couple more stretches and then do some mindful breathing and sort of refresh our, our mind, body, and spirit. Let's get the fronts of our legs. We already got the backs of our calves and hamstrings stretched a bit with our spacing right. Chair stretch. Hinging forward and supporting our body with that left arm on the right leg. That'll help as you hinge that leg back. And allow the knee to drift down. Nose breathing helps calm your nervous system. See if you can breathe in, filling your lungs from the bottom to the top. Letting that knee drift down and the head drift up. Lean back very gently if it, if it suits you to open your spine a bit. And when you're ready, exhale, lean towards your chair, hinging at the elbow, pat yourself on the back if you want. And breathe. 
breathe deep. You'll feel that stretch all the way down the leg and even on the front of the shin if your toes relax and pointing back. You can do that stretch. We're going to take our time face the left side of the room. You can, if it suits you better, hinging forward. You could tuck the toe under, as I'm doing here. I prefer letting it relax, toe pointing back to get a good stretch on the front of the ankle. Remember to relax that knee. Let it drift down. Breathe deep. Honor your body if the shoulder doesn't want to extend overhead. You can still do a great stretch here. Letting the knee drift down, opening the spine a bit if it feels comfortable. And then exhale, stretching through that right side of the body. Just hang out for a breath here. Good. All right. Relax. Take your time. Go ahead and sit your hips back into your chair so that you can find a comfy spine supported position. Resting your hands ideally in your lap. Releasing any tension. Maybe do a body scan from the top of your head down, down, down through your shoulders, spine, hips, and legs. And with each breath, you can lower your gaze or close your eyes. Think of breathing in through your nose, naturally, effortlessly. Filling your lungs from the bottom to the top. As you inhale, know that your body is bringing in energizing oxygen. To every cell, every cell in your body. As you breathe out, your body is, is effortlessly releasing that which you don't need. Continue to breathe, noticing on your in-breath if there's any tightness or discomfort, and just sort of direct that energy of your breath there. Soothe your body. And as you exhale, let it go. You can continue with your effortless energizing breathing. Um, I want to remind you that even though it's now March uh, and many of our, our Yellow Springs residents have gotten vaccinated, many of us have not. And so we still need to keep those measures that we know work, like wearing your mask, social distancing, um, washing your hands, cleaning high touch surfaces. Hopefully our kids are getting back to school sometime this month. And I want to personally thank our local leaders, many of whom are women and March is national women's history month. Of course, um, I'm reading a book right now. It's about diversity and leadership and, and, uh, many, experts theorize that, well, the world would be a much better place if we put more women and women of color in charge. <laughs> um, we do need a few good men, but we sure do need a bunch of great women. <laughs> so uh, take good care of yourself. Keep it safe and simple. And bye till next time.